Good afternoon, Zambia. We know Zambia is not beginning today and it's not ending today. We know President Hakainde Chinema was given a mandate to carry on on the development of Zambia to make it a democracy that will shine and bring accolades that the world may see that something good, something great can come out of Africa. And that has been our prayer. There are those that are rising, the youth who are the majority of this country, and they are thirst to see a leadership that can inspire. And when they saw a body come to the fore and become a president, they believed finally a beacon they had been waiting for had arrived on the stage. Some of us took back and thought that indeed we had something we can see as a challenge. I'm coming from a background of a unionist who's so passionate. And when I ran against President Haka Indechilema, I thought this man would show us how things should be done. Honestly, when I lost to him, I said I'd lost to somebody who's worth losing to. But as days are passing through, as I look back as a youthful leader, my heart is torn to tatters because this direction we are taking is not anything that would have ever imagined or assumed. Nothing personal. I fought battles for President Haka in the He knows. I went to ZNBC and fought for him, paid my own money when I've got nothing to give. We laid our souls down when he was taken to Mukobeko, some of us. But when he came into office, nothing personal. I was the first person he put in cells. I was beaten like a dog. The videos are out there in Kitwe when we were reminding him simply of him bringing free education. They told us it's too early. After we are beaten like dogs thrown in cells, I remember he was out of the country, like most of the way things happen. He issues instructions that make him seem like he's not there, but actually he's there. I received a phone call from his aide. That should have been from UK. And that time we were in cells, being beaten for simply reminding. We thought he was just getting started and probably had not gotten root of the control of government because he was basically new. But now it is looking as days pass by, as time moves on, he's now entrenching those same tendencies that Zambians thought were a thing of the past. I went to see the ambassador there at Emma's Deopolis. I'm an architect. And there are some systems that we are created for repression to break down the strength of an African man and woman. They built for us cells that are death chambers. When I was talking to him, this was the size of the window with corrugations across it. I remember when we were thrown in two cells, that is in March this year, we went to Central Police. I'll always remind President Akande Chilema that when we went in those cells, we found out that in December, six youths had died there out of suffocation and trampid. This is on record. This is not a secret. This is something that they know. We thought the man who had said he would revisit those places had come, a messiah. They were calling him a messiah. He would repeal these things. But now he's entrenching a tendency that is taking us backwards. The youth that rose and gave him a mandate are heartbroken. We are heartbroken. If he thinks we are speaking this because we are politically opposed, he is wrong. We are standing up to offer leadership. My wife drove me here. She's worried. She doesn't know whether I'll go back home. She was saying, I'll sit and wait for you. I said, please, go. At least if they lock me up, who would be after? Who look after the children? This is a true story. I'm not making this up. Because she has seen it before. When I go, I don't come back under the new Dawn government. So we are appealing to you, President Akane Chilema. I know you are back. I saw your plane. You are back, and I know you are watching. Some of us are starting our lives, and we still are naive. We still dream of a great Zambia. We still are hopeful that things can be better. If you have given up and you have come for retribution to finish off your political enemy, some of us are not your enemies. We are other people's children. And we have got children. And we want to make up a country that our children will rise on. But this tendency where now being a politician is like a death sentence. You don't know where tomorrow you'll be alive or dead. This we cannot go. And I can assure you, if you want to kill us, kill us. Because some of us ain't going to back down. Wherever I want to go, our feet will take us there. We have the hope that refuses to die. And for Zambia, we're ready to go all the way. Thank you.
we we are now going to have um, the PF uh, acting president, Honorable Uvinda. Good afternoon. Isn't this a good opportunity for us to remind each other of the fact that today Zambia and the world is commemorating the 12th anniversary of the demise of uh, Frederick Titus Jacob Chiluba. And Frederick Chiluba will be remembered globally as having been the first to have been elected in a multi-party democracy, Zambia. Isn't it ironical that on a day when we're supposed to be celebrating democracy, we are actually bemoaning the dwindling democracy in our country? The Patriotic Front is not a stranger to this kind of meeting. We've had several meetings of this nature. We have lamented how we're being ill-treated. We have said before that some amongst us think that it has become fashionable for leaders of the Patriotic Front to be harassed. Some have even gone to the extent of saying but you were worse. Others have said, you did the same. My response has always been, this was divine. It was providential goodness. You cannot miss something unless it is God. And you cannot compare one that exists with one that doesn't. In these few months, Zambians have been given an opportunity to compare and contrast. And for those who have given it to themselves to say, <coughs> PF, don't complain because you did the same. I have a message for them. Development is the essence of leaving spaces better than you found them. When you leave them the same way you found them, you have not developed. Especially when you make them worse than the way you found them. The past cannot justify the ill treatment of one another. Had that been the case, Christ would not have died on the cross for all of us. I want to assure all Zambians that Hagainde Hijilema's agenda, the UPND agenda, fits squarely in the comment of our founding father, President Kenneth David Kaunda, when in that interview he said, I don't mind any other except that one. I've forgotten his name, that one. And the interviewer reminded him. And he said, yes, that same one. That one, I'm not sure about that one, will divide the country. The members say, Abakulu, Kenneth Kaunda for wonders. By the time Haga and the is through with this country, we shall be divided. After he's through with us, the politicians, he will certainly come for 
any person who opposes him. Now he's pursuing us because we oppose him. And because we openly oppose him and we have organized ourselves as opposition political parties. But remember, when we oppose him, we oppose him in the interests of Zambians. After he's done with us, he will also look out for ones who will go into a shop and complain. Midimu is too expensive. They will also be his targets. <laughs> so for those of you citizens who are standing aloof when you see us being harassed, when you see us being arrested, be forewarned. After us, it is you. Time has therefore come for all of us Zambians, all of us citizens, to stand up and to defend the rights of every other citizen. The erosion of one person's rights is the erosion of all people's rights. The one thing that I can assure citizens about is that the Patriotic Front shall not be cowed. We in the Patriotic Front have given it to ourselves to continue to mobilize, to continue to speak on behalf of the Zambians. We join our colleagues in the other opposition political parties because we know that there is strength in numbers. We therefore call upon all of you citizens. Time has come. The call to action is now. When you hear of any person being brutalized because of their political standing and you look the other way, you should know that you are complicit to the destruction of democracy in this country. Time has come for every Zambian to stand up for a fellow Zambian. Had it not been for these people raising concerns, Haga and Ejidema would have made all those farmers who grew soya to have it burnt. But because these people spoke, at least he has now agreed to pay at least six kwacha from 11 kwacha. Hadn't it been for these people's voices, those farmers would have gone without anything. So when we speak, we don't speak for ourselves. We speak for you, Zambians. My message to Haga and Ejirema is that he is not the first thing to happen to this world. He is not the first thing to happen to Zambia. He is not the first president of Zambia. I know he, like, he likes fests. Yes, he's the first president to go to Ukraine and Russia <laughs> to go and be among us people who are going to mediate. And yet he himself had already taken sides in that conflict. He himself voted against one of the warring factors. And then he goes and says, I want to come and mediate. My message to him, my friend, Haga Inde. Two things. If you want to be a mediator in conflict, maintain neutrality. We advise you to be neutral over the Ukraine-Russian war because Zambia is too small to get involved in such conflict. Instead, you departed from the long-held position of non-alignment and voted against one in favor of the other. The second message is Please, don't dare go and clean up the mess in your neighbor's house before you clean up the mess in your house. Unify Zambians before you ever dare to contribute to the unity of the global economy. Because doing that will expose you. My third message is that the Zambians in 1991 stood up because they wanted to govern themselves 
in a multi-party democracy. Your attempt to annihilate multi-party democracy in Zambia shall not be accepted. And we shall mobilize to make sure that we defend the democracy that we fought for in 1991. Kaunda had been president for 27 years. We stopped him. What about you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, if we, we will now have Citizens First President, Honorable Harry Kalawa. Thank my glasses. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, uh, thank you, colleagues, for what you have uh, said. Uh, and I will try to ride on uh, the many things that you've said. Uh, as I was coming here, I received a barrage of calls. Uh, from people telling me, but why are you going for that press briefing? Why do you want to go and mix with the PF? Uh, because uh, even the PF were brutalizing others when they were in government. And I said, oh, okay. Uh, here is uh, my message to those colleagues. I thought I should use this platform. Yes, I was thrown in the cells uh, before the elections in, 19, uh, in 2021. Yes, I was uh, tear gassed several times, but picking the words of uh, President, uh, I mean, Acting President Lubinda, one wrong does not make you also to begin doing a wrong and want to justify it. Zambia now is at the crossroads. I had received a call from President Akainde Hichilema when I was. Uh, incarcerated at Camp Finsa in 2021, when I was held by the police. When I came out, he called me and was uh, sympathizing with me and said, don't worry, Moana, very soon we shall cross. Is this the crossing that he was talking about? <laughs> yes, we have crossed. And now, as long as you are a political opponent, you are being targeted. This is not the Zambia that we thought we would have. Yes, we have crossed. Institutions of governance are being used to oppress all of us seated here. And as President Luvinda had said, today it is Harry Kalaba, tomorrow it will be you. Yes, we have crossed. But clearly you can see that the democratic space in this country is fast shrinking. The other day, we received uh, a letter from the Register of Societies telling us that you did not have your, you did not have your meeting of the 500 people you talked about as your convention in Indola. <laughs> we have discovered with the police that you didn't have this meeting. And so we are giving you 21 days in which you should tell us why you lied to us <laughs> that you didn't have that meeting. Now, these are the jokes, and I'm happy you are laughing, because these are the jokes that you begin getting from an oppressive regime. The moment you begin talking, they will want to begin finding reasons to gag you. They will want to find reasons to stop you from going ahead. I want to tell you through this uh, auspicious occasion that those who are stopped do not look like the one talking to you. We will not be stopped because someone wants us to be stopped. Uh, we will choose to speak for the people of Zambia and uh, to advise the institutions of governance. Please, avoid being used. Avoid being used. Because at the end of the day, those that are using you will one day leave power. And when they leave power, you'll be on your own. So my advice is, please, don't do it. And uh, a government must stop this tendency of using institutions of government to fight their own political battles. Why do you want to use the police? Why do you want to use the Anti-Corruption Commission? 
Why do you want to use the Drug Enforcement Commission and all agencies of the state to fight your political battles? Why? Just why? I think be brave enough. Face us in the political arena. And uh, let's exchange ideas. And let's see whose ideas are better and let the Zambian people choose. But this behavior, this cowardice of wanting to hide behind the institutions of governance will not help us. And today we are seated here because one of the opposition members and several of them, as I sit here, many have tested uh, our cells here. If you have not tested cells, <laughs> Madam Gateka, <laughs> be ready. Because under this regime, for as long as you are seen no, and not to be politically correct, mm -hmm. they'll come for you. Why are you mixing with uh, Harry Kalab? <laughs> Why are you mixing with Given Lovinda? Why are you mixing with Mwenda Kasson? They'll ask you those questions, and then you're not politically correct, and then they'll come for you. But we need to be strong, uh, our colleagues seated here. We should not be sell out when the country has reached the crossroads. Where I come from, they say, Pafu Abantu, Pashala Abantu. Zambia must know. There are some people who talk for them, regardless of what comes ahead. And that is the resolve that we have made. We are not doing this because there's any personal beef between the government of the UPND and ourselves or myself. We are saying it for reasons of posterity. We are saying it because once we keep quiet, we'll be doing an injustice to this country. We'll be perpetrating illegalities in this country. And it seems to me the New Dawn government is hell-bent on preserving itself. And they want to stifle anybody that wants to come up. And so they now want to be crude in order to instill fear. When I saw uh, Ambassador Mwamba, how he was beaten, I didn't even know he had lost a tooth. <laughs> Until this uh, afternoon, when he was showing me that, no, my tooth is gone. I said, you are lucky because the tooth which has gone is this one here. If it was the front one, <laughs> you would have known what a natural whistle uh, is all about. But we are not here to defend anybody. We are not here to say, if Ari Kalaba makes something wrong, he should not be pursued. If I am wrong, let me be dealt with because the law is blind. But... At least follow the law. If you've been talking about the rule of law, at least follow the law. And then Zambians will know that at least you are doing things in the correct way, as opposed to what we are seeing, because now it is vindictiveness, it is uh, political scores to be settled, uh, it is you are in the wrong camp, therefore you cannot be part of... Uh, Zambia is being divided every day. And yes, it is true. We are now a divided nation. We are more divided than we have ever been before. And we can't continue on this trajectory. We can't pretend that we are a united country. We are divided. And we are calling upon the powers that be to ensure that we come together. Because there's much more that brings us together than what divides us. And so we'll be speaking about this because regardless of where you come from, colleagues, we are all Zambians. Regardless of who you are, for as long as you belong to this part called Zambia, you should be treated the same one, equally so. So we are asking the authorities that be, please unite us. Don't divide us oh, on the basis of tribe, on the basis of region, on the basis of political affiliation. Regardless of which party you belong to, you must be looked at as a Zambian. And that is what we are advocating for. And so we hope today this message is loud and clear and that the powers that be have heard stop the arbitrary use, abuse, of state institutions. Let the police be professional. Let the Anti-Corruption Commission do their job without being coerced. Let the Drug Enforcement Commission do their job without being coerced. This issue of pointing at people, go for that one, go for that one, is wrong. Last but not the least, I also want to encourage the international community. The international community must not remain silent. They were very loud in the previous regime. They were calling out the PF for who they were when the PF was in government. What has changed now? The voice of the international community is almost muted. We would want to hear the Americans speak more. We would want to hear the European Union. We would want to hear the, the British speak. So that, because an abuse is an abuse. A brutality is a brutality. 
and it must be condemned. It, it should not be because you've got the right person according to your standards in power, therefore you should be muted. It is important that sin is identified by what it is. Sin must be called sin. And so therefore we are grateful that we are able to see that amidst this, we in the opposition now should begin to get in together. We should begin talking more often than not so that we can face the world together. Thank you very much. Okay, and wrap up, I agree with you. Um, the exhibit himself will come and uh, <laughs> share with us what he went, then, then we can close. Uh, thank you to our leaders uh, that are here and that have reason to, you know, condemn the action that was done against me. Uh, as Honorable Given Rinda said about uh, our second president, Dr. Frederick Jacob Titus Chiruva, is his memorial today. And I was supposed to be at his memorial this afternoon, but I felt probably the exhibit needed to be here to tell the story on his own. And before I, I speak, I think let me rely on the USA 2022 country report on human rights practices. Previously, when this report is issued, the US ambassador will speak about the report to the country that is affiliated to. Zambia receives assistance and there is a comment about Zambia. So the country report, this is what it has said, and you should take it was just released last week. One, in 2022, there was unlawful and arbitrary killings. There was extrajudicial killings. There was torture and cruel and inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment perpetrated by government. There are serious restrictions on freedom of expression and media. It has also says there is extensive and serious government corruption. Now, this is the US government saying this about their friend. You will understand why the ambassador is even embarrassed to come and say this to you Zambians. These words came true to me on Wednesday. I was on radio when I finished appearing on, on, on radio on Wednesday. That was um, uh, 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 the 14th. As I was driving out of the radio station, I saw a green fortuner and you usually see it at service headquarters. There's a crack unit there. They bought them new cars. I looked at it, but there was an Indian driving in it and he had a, a phone and a laptop. So I think that disarmed me. I said, ah, I think I'm just mistaken. I went to the lawyers, um, you know, in Roma. Uh, of course, to alert them, you know, one, one of our bloggers, two of our bloggers were arrested earlier in the week and I wanted to get an update of how the matter was going. Because earlier we had expressed concern. When Mr. Tabo Kawana held a press conference uh, the previous Friday, he mentioned the Patriotic Front and Mr. Fred Membe. Even before investigations were done, and for the Patriotic Front, we're not even the first one to publish those letters. So we were, we had taken interest why Tabo Kawana was mentioning the Patriotic Front. For me, you know I publish on my own pages. I didn't even publish those letters because I didn't find especially the two letters credible. So after seeing the lawyers, I was driving out. I saw the Fortuna again, the same Indian in it. I realized this matter was serious. I was being trailed. But I, I laughed. Why would you spend so much money to conduct surveillance on someone who's readily available in plain sight. There was something I was doing in Long Acres. I came near Hot FM there. When I was driving out, again, I saw the same car. It was at that stage that I called my wife. I said, can we meet home? In my heart, I was saying, if anyone is looking for me, I think the best place to find me should be my home. So she was in town. She said there was traffic and she was coming up, coming, coming later. 
I mean, coming in traffic. That is the reason I decided to go through the car wash. My car was dirty. I didn't wash it for a few days. Uh, I went at the car wash on Mosotunia Road after Lewanika uh, shopping mall. There's a, 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 a car wash called Jamis. So I parked and I went into the shed. Within a few minutes, these three cars stormed in and people came out. I think there were about 12. I looked, I, I was not bothered. If you've been on that road several times, you'll understand that that's a road that the president uses all the time. And they're usually, usually men in plain clothes or policemen that would come to do the route lining. So I, I, I didn't bother. But I saw all of them coming to where I was seated. So I stood up. And then because of the trailing, I asked, are you guys following me? So I saw the, the, the gentleman who was in front, who I now suspected was a police officer. He says, yes. He says, he addressed me ambassador. I said, okay, but why didn't you issue a police call out? I was on radio yesterday. I was on TV yesterday. Even now I was on radio. Why do you have to do all this drama? He said, you're coming with us. I said, okay, that is fine. But allow me to call my lawyer and allow me to inform my family. I think that's where the confusion started because they wouldn't let me make that call. They all came around me and attacked me. They were trying to get the phone. I managed to dial. The phone was on speaker and my wife answers. But I calmly told her, even if I was being fought, my hand were being tied. They were pulling me. I said, I'm at the car wash here on, 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 on uh, Mosotunia Road. She knows it. We wash our cars there. And the police are here to pick me up. In fact, I didn't say the police. I said men calling themselves the police. Because at that stage, I didn't know if they were the police. They showed me no ID. The cars they came with were private. They had no number plate. And 12 of them surrounding you. So at, you, 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 you are not sure, even when these men are taking you, that they're taking you to a police station. So I demanded that at least allow me to speak to my lawyer. So they were trying to lift me. They were twisting my hands and they were pushing me. When they pushed me to the car, there were three women filming, especially the pregnant one. I felt very sad for her because the way they went and attacked and yanked the phone from her. And I think they also picked her up. Her, her crime there was just filming this violent incidents that was playing out. They bundled me, bundled me, uh, bundled me in the car and the lead officer even told me that we'll sort you out. You, you think you are clever, we'll sort you out. So they sped off, took me to service headquarters and you know, they left in, me in a room for about two hours. Then they came to do the interrogation. Later, they took me to the car wash again. They had gotten the, car, the keys and when we arrived at the car wash, they didn't find the car. They were very annoyed with me that the car was not there. I said, gentlemen, you must be foolish. You've held me, you've locked me up, you've grabbed phones from me. So at what stage have I moved this car you're annoyed with? So they called the young man, it was around 20 hours, 20, 30. I think there was only one man at the car wash. And they also bundled him in the car. And they drove me, we drove back to service headquarters. I still pleaded. In fact, there's another matter that is very important. When we arrived the first time at service headquarters and they gathered around me, when their seniors came, who introduced himself as Mr. Kalala, I told him, your officers have injured me. And now my, my thumb was swollen. I said, look at my, my thumb, my wrist and my shoulder. I don't know if it's dislocated. Then I said, I have a lot of fear on my neck because I have a lot of pain on my neck. When they were trying to force me in there, I'm a bit tall. And you know where they're trying to collapse you into a small bag. I think that's where they really did a lot of damage on my right side. So I complained. I said, I need to see a doctor. I'm worried about the pain on my neck. He said, uh, Ambassador, he was a bit respectful. We'll let you see a medical doctor. It didn't happen. They took me to Emmersdale Police. No one knew where I was. Lucky enough, Honorable Given Lubind and the other MPs, at now I heard that I was abducted and they were looking for me. They didn't know where I was. At the police, they gave strict instructions. They, 
If anyone came that I was there, they should refuse, and no one should see me. Um, at the police, I asked that I needed to go to the hospital. They refused. They said that it will be done tomorrow morning. I said, I'm worried about the pain in my neck. I think that shouldn't wait up to tomorrow. Well, they just booked me in and locked me up in this cell. The cell is a very small cell, as uh, my dear brother Kaswande was saying. He separated their women there. It must be trauma for the women. There are men, women, and a small area. If a woman is bathing, I would see her. And in a small cell, we are 30 of us. You can't sleep straight. You, you are locked, interlocked like this. Because there's no space. So they put you there. And the police officer, the one uh, uh, who, who was leading, had warned me. He had even used Bemba. And when I entered the police cell, I understood what he meant. First, it was very heavily congested. There were a lot of people with flus. You don't know if it's TB, if it's, uh, if it's COVID. You have no idea. But you are in a small space that you have to endure. Uh, I was not able to see anyone. I didn't know what was happening until the following day around 10, 11 hours when they allowed Honorable Makebi Zulu, my lawyer, to see me. Even there, I was from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I was not allowed to seek medical treatment. The following day, the pain, my, the headache became very, very severe. And I pleaded that I, I be allowed to uh, uh, see a doctor. One of the police officers brought medicine. Now the police officers have just beaten me, brutalized me. Can I take their medicine? Can I trust their medicine? So they said I should take the painkiller. So I got it and just threw away. I didn't know if it was poison. Um, finally, when I was uh, given the charges around uh, 17, 18 hours, and I was released on uh, uh, police bond, uh, I went straight to the investigation hospital where I was examined. There was confirmation that uh, there was a lot of soft tissue injury on my thumb, on my wrist, my shoulder. Uh, and then I had a lot of bruises. I didn't realize they bruised me in the, in the entire manhandling they were doing. I had a lot of bruises. Some of them, you, you saw them on uh, social media. And my tooth, that has, uh, <laughs> this tooth that, uh, you know, uh, w w was also... Uh, 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 removed. Now, I want to say something with, with your president, uh, chairman, with your permission, because they've used these charges to attempt to scandalize me, to attempt to reduce me to a forger and, you know, um, uh, you are all aware that I've served as, for 10 years, I served as Dr. Chuluva's um, uh, uh, official spokesperson and administrator. I was privileged to have been permanent secretary, you know, in northern province, in, in uh, eastern province, in western province. I was permanent secretary at Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Services. I was also privileged to have been ambassador in South Africa. I was also ambassador in Ethiopia. I was permanent representative to the African Union, and I was permanent representative to uh, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. In an article that that uh, two, three weeks ago, Dr. Sichua wrote, he warned that Zambia had lost it, had, will likely lose its hard-won democracy. In his article, Zambia, the president's five-point plan to stay in power at all cost, why Hichilema is desperate to retain power. His first point was that Hichilema was determined to contain the Catholic Church. These were not my views. These were the views of, um, of uh, Dr. Sishua. Three weeks before the so-called letters appeared. For those in the know, this so-called letter they are saying I forged on the 8th June has been in circulation for months, Mr. President. It's been in circulation for months. But they want to scandalize my name. They want to bring these charges that have been manufactured like Tabo Kawana says, before any investigation is done, he names the PF, he names Dr. Fred Membe. This, these are the people who, for the moment, they've targeted. Like they've targeted everywhere else. It's not that there are investigations that, that we are guilty of these offenses. 
No, it's a plan to bring these oppressive charges to attempt to break us. So this is what I've done. This morning, I went to the police. I've registered a complaint against, especially the three police officers that were very brutal with me. But I've, uh, uh, I've, I've advised that all of them should be a charge for assault because I witnessed when they went into the crowd and they harassed the crowd to grab their phones and some pick, picked, picked up very brutally. I hope that the police can investigate. I have medical reports here to confirm what was done to me. And you members of the press, I can show you. Tomorrow in the morning, I'm going to the police public and uh, police and public complaints commission for the unprofessional and brutal manner I was arrested. I'm not above the law. I can be summoned. I can comply. But I think it is wrong for the police to brutally treat citizens in the manner they treated me. To manufacture charges, you heard that a police officer who brutally beat me, knocked out my tooth, he was the first one to report a case of assault. This is cover-up. That's fraud. He should be arrested for fraud. So I want the Police and Complaints Commission to pursue those issues. And then I challenge the U.S. Ambassador to read the finding on Zambia in the 2020 U.S. report. It's mandatory. Honorable Kalaba will tell you. Because when we receive assistance, then they look at our human rights record. They've been doing this since 1961. So the U.S. ambassador must sit and read to you Zambians what they found about us. And in 2022, they found awful things. And let me repeat, unlawful and arbitrary killings. This is under President Haka in the Hichilema's watch. He's president in the entire 2022. Extrajudicial killings. You hear the police have shot someone even before investigations. Torture and cruel and inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment by government. Mr. President, I don't know if you understand. At the Kawash, members of the public recognize who you are. And in the manner I was treated, you can imagine the public humiliation. I don't know if there's even a price to that. The wounds will heal. But the public humiliation I went through, you know, uh, 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 was, was, was great. So... Uh, Madam President, as I end, uh, I think that will be my call. So thank you. First, I'd like to, th to thank members of Parliament, members of our political parties that have supported me. Uh, a lot of people called concerned. Thank you very much. And to the praise singers from the UPND, I feel so sad for them. They think that this should happen to us. And, uh, you know, that discourse is dangerous. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry that you had to go through what you went through. I think no human being should be subjected to such um, abuse. Um, members of the press, I think that we need to understand that, yes, we, we have come because of what happened to him but the picture is actually bigger than that this was just the final straw that caused us to say we are now going to get together and do something about this because if we do not raise our voices um worse things than this can happen in the past few weeks we have had a number of opposition political figures arrested detained brutalized and just harassed or intimidated by one wing of the Zambian security forces or another. Amongst those that have fallen short to this, um, these actions by uh, the government agents of the UPND include the sixth president of the Republic of Zambia, His Excellency Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu and his family, President uh, Lungu's former political aide, Dr. Zumani Zimba, President of the Socialist Party, Dr. Fred Membe, President of the EEP, Mr. Tayali, PEP President, Mr. Sean Tembo, and most recently, of course, we've just heard uh, Ambassador Mwamba, um, who was assaulted, abducted, charged, and arrested, and denied medical attention. 
even the clergy have not been um, spared. Uh, we all heard the recent insults and the threats directed at Father Salangeta and the Chawama, uh, the Chawama Parish Priest and Most Reverend Dr. Alec Banda, Archbishop of Lusaka. This list is by no means of, is, uh, exhaustive because there are many other Zambian citizens who are of less prominence politically, so, so they are not in the public space, but they have suffered the same fate. I got a call from one of them today uh, who came out on Friday. I can't even remember the name, but these are people that are going through these things. The New Heritage Party has been warning this nation that about the danger that the UPND party in government poses to the unity and peace and future stability of our country by their violent intolerant, intolerance to criticism and the growing dictatorship of their leader, President Hakainde. We warned Zambia a few months ago that Zambia was sleepwalking into a dictatorship. Our warning is unfortunately proving true. What then should be done to stop this anti-democratic trajectory that the UPND is carelessly taking this country into? It is a very careless move. I mean, when you give somebody um, an opportunity to rule this country, you are saying to them, look, you can actually lift this country from this level to a higher level. But what we are seeing is, is totally different and unfortunately something that is very, very regrettable. Um, we condemn in the strongest term this cowardly and shamefully primitive strategy by the UPND to intimidate the opposition and Zambian citizens in general into silence. Um, I'm not too sure whether you remember what we went through in the First Republic, where you couldn't discuss anything. You know, you were afraid to talk about the government or the president or anybody. People were just afraid. That is something that some of us are definitely not prepared to go back to. And we are prepared to fight this to the bitter end. We cannot accept such oppression because that's not what we fought for. That's not the independence that we fought for. Um, unfortunately, the cost and damage done to individual citizens even after the dictatorship has been removed from power, is usually irreparable, especially where there is a serious physical injury. Your tooth will not grow again, by the way, just so that you know. As for the country, there is damage to the democratic institutions of governance and the economy amongst many. In the worst case scenario, there is the danger of creating a failed state as is the case in some countries. In the case of Zambia, the civil society has either been bought or intimidated into silence, acquiescence, and even tacit corroboration, with some of the civil society voices actually cheering on the brutalizers and even justifying these barbaric injustices. However, the most damning indictment uh, for dereliction of duty by an institution which is funded by Zambians, citizens, is um, the Human Rights Commission of Zambia. This institution and its commissioners are the most treacherous, incompetent individuals to have ever been given this sacred responsibility. People's rights are routinely violated in this country and one hardly hears a whisper from them. We haven't heard them. When somebody goes, human rights, regardless of whether somebody is a murderer or not, human rights are human rights. And it's important for these people to speak. But have you heard them speak at all? They are just quiet. We don't hear a single word from them. What are they doing? What are they being paid for? What are they doing in those positions if they cannot speak for the citizens? Um, to our fellow opposition political parties, we want to assure all of you unflinching, sup unflinching support whenever you are unjustly treated by a government party and uh, by the government in power 
and its agents. Further, we want to assure you of our readiness to be part of a more united front in adv advancing the restoration of the full independence, independence rights of our people, including the right to unimpeded land ownership, freedoms of speech, assembly, um, association, and economic freedom. To the Zambian people, we pledge to be your voice whenever your rights and interests as citizens are threatened. To the UPND government, we request you to respect the mandate you were given by the Zambian people. Remember, by the ballot you came, by the ballot you will leave. I thank you. Yeah. Thank you.